Hey, welcome back to our new session. Uh, we're still in the uh, section of uh, 3.7, right? The uh, relative rates, which we have seen a couple examples already. Here was our last one. Right, the question, I right, say, a uh, television camera at ground level filming the lift off of a rocket. Right, so we have a launch pad, we have a rocket. I don't matter how it is, right? That's a camera uh, which is filming it. That is the uh, rocket, right? And the rocket goes up after launching, then the position equation is uh, s equals five, uh, 50 t squared right so that rocket after it will go up right and then that's a ground right the camera is standing on the ground level to film that regardless the height of the camera right basically and then what we have uh, the s is in feet or t is in uh, second right that's what it is and the camera is 2,000 feet away from the launch pad which the ground level and vertical going uh, uh, what rocket uh, forms a right triangle that as time passing maybe one second after it will be 50 feet high uh, after 10 seconds like what we're given in the question right, it will be 50 times t squared, whatever it is, right, the height. Then there is the angle of elevation that no matter how time, how high the rocket goes, right, the angle elevation, we may call that uh, theta, is this angle, right, as the rocket's going up, that angle of elevation will be also increased, right, that is the thing. And the distance is fixed. Also, this distance is getting up. The hypotenuse is also getting up. Right? We may using that hypotenuse, we may not using the hypotenuse. Right? So that is the a true graph. And then we can simplify that to a right triangle. Right? That we have a Rocket after 10 seconds, the tip right, and the angle of elevation, we call that theta. Right, the position is S here, this one is fixed to be 2000. Right, that basically we know that is the angle have a tangent value Right, the tangent of the angle theta is s over 2000. And we need to find is d theta over dt. Right, maybe we need to use the hypotenuse of course, we may use the s, right? where s is a function of uh, 50 t squared, given that the time is at t second. Our s will be 50 times t squared, uh, which is the square of 10. That is 5,000 feet high uh, and uh, our DSDT is a hundred T which is a hundred times ten is a thousand we may use the DSDT also right also the hypotenuse is the square root of uh, two thousand and 5,000 by that we can get a uh, factor out of 1,000 1,000 times square root of uh, 
2 squared times 5 squared, which is 29. Right, that's our hypotenuse, which is 1,000 times radical polynomial. And right, then the following is just figure out what is the uh, d theta dt. I use the given information that's tangent theta equals s over 2,000. So that is what's given. So we differentiate this one, right? The secant square theta times d theta dt equals ds dt over 2000, which uh, we can find, well, d theta over dt equals ds dt over 2000 divided by secant square, which is multiplied by, if we write this way, the square of cosine theta, which ds dt is 1000, Cosine is adjacent of a hypotenuse that's 2000 over 1000 square root of 29. And we take the square of that, right, that's one half, we get 4 over 29. which the result is 2 over 29 for the unit is uh, 1.5 radius, I mean radians per second. Well, we know that the angle is in degree measure and in radians measure, but when we taking the trigger function or inverse trigger function. Uh, usually, the function has a variable of uh, radians as input. Right? So I believe uh, maybe you have seen that in your pre-calculus. Right? The radians is uh, more or less the realistic measurement of uh, angle. Right? The degree is made up. Right? The radian is more natural measure of the uh, angle. Uh, so some people have seen that well if a circle was uh, graphed then no matter how large the circle can make right it always is a certain relationship with the uh, angle and its radius. It's always a proportion to the radius right no matter how large the circle is. And the circumference uh, and the radius has a proportion of 2 pi. Right? So if we go to a semicircle cut in half, then the circumference of a semicircle, right, the curved part, and its uh, radius is just uh, pi times its radius. Right? Or if we feel the full circle, that is uh, the circumference proportion to its diameter, that's uh, pi times d, or 2 pi times r, which is uh, related double, uh, which is related with the radius times the entire angle, right, from initial to the end, right, that's 2 pi. Therefore, it is invented that the pi is the semicircle, how much it uh, goes. Uh, this angle, we call that Pi. Uh, and this pi is actually the real defined angle and maybe and in history right something like uh, someone like ancient uh, uh, Babylonian right those people invented that well they could cut the degree into 180 pieces by the angle that each piece then each piece will be uh, one degree, right? but uh, the degree value measure is just made up and the radian measure is more nature. Right? So every time we're dealing with the angle, right, be sure that 
we are dealing with the radial measure. Right. So be some extra. Okay. Right. So that is everything we had uh, for chapter three. By right, the chapter three, we have some uh, starting with the limit definition. Then we go to the formulas of uh, functions, right? The constant, the polynomial, right? The a scalar multiply, of course, or linear combination is a short thing. And then we have what? We have sine cosine e to the x, which is a natural base. Right? Then natural log, which is log of e base. Then extend to any base or any suitable base of exponential function and any suitable base for logarithmic function. We have six trigonometric functions. Also, we have six inverse trigonometric function together with product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. Right? That's all the rules we have and all the formulas we have. Afterwards, implicit differentiation higher order implicit differentiation, which simply is just apply it twice, right? and higher order uh, explicit differentiation, which dif dif differentiate the functions that we have seen before, and the, ra and the rate of change related to position, velocity, and acceleration that is uh, differentiate, uh, and also the examples rate of change for the word problems. Right, for word problems, just analyze the question carefully and then go through it. Right, that's everything for our chapter 3. Right, which is uh, the chapter 2 and chapter 3 together. That is our first part of the course. Right, then the remaining part uh, we go to chapter 4. Right? Every rule we understand already, then we will see more application about uh, what the derivative actually shows. I right? literally just means uh, the geometric meaning right, of the derivative. Like we have mentioned in the review session, Right, uh, we are use some properties together with whatever we had learned from pre-calculus. Together, we can make a uh, accurate graph. Right, that's what we will deal with in this chapter: applications. application of differentiation. Oh, will be a lot of uh, geometric meaning. Then our first section deal with extrema on an interval. And that's what we do in the Right, define first f of c is a maxima. greater than or equal f of x for x in i which is for all x belong to the i right then also f of c is a minimum
right? That notation means for every x in the interval i, right? And for every x belongs to i. So when f of c can call the minima of f on the interval i when f of c is less than or equal x, right? For some example. Right, on this interval, we have the highest point is here, right? The lowest point is here. We have the maxima. We have the minima. Right? And they are called the absolute extrema or global extrema if uh, to be specified. Right, could be called absolute maxima, could be called global maxima. Uh, we sometimes can call it uh, absolute maximum for the highest point because that point is the highest over of, of the uh, f over that interval. Right, then this value is the absolute maxima at this point, and this. What we see is the lowest over R, that is the absolute minimum over R. The same function, but now we have uh, one point is dig out that is supposed to be the maximum if it's defined, but uh, actually, right, nothing point is uh, the highest. We don't have anything bigger than that, but it's supposed to be the highest, but it's dig out. So this one only has the absolute minima but no absolute extra, uh, absolute maximum. Right, this point is supposed to be the maximum, but it's digged out, right? So therefore, uh, we do not have absolute maximum in this graph right, on this interval. And similarly, for the same function, It's taken out another point, which this point is uh, well defined somewhere else, right? It's supposed to be the absolute ma minimum. That nothing else is below that. This point actually, it it was the minimum, but taken out, right? So only we have the absolute maximum, but we do not have absolute minimum. So that is uh, the first introduction, right? what it uh, graphically, how it can look like. By definition, well, everything, uh, the biggest is the biggest, the smallest is smallest. But it's supposed to be the biggest, it's, and the other one is supposed to be the lowest, but they are not defined at where it's supposed to be. Right? Then, Define somewhere else is fine if we define that uh, a lower point, then this lower point is minimum. But if we define somewhere above it, that uh, we don't have the minimum in this case. Right? Then in the middle case, uh, at this point even it's not defined anywhere else, that we don't have the absolute maximum for this curve.
and uh, for the relative uh, extrema is on that certain interval or on a very limited interval that point is a extrema which uh, we can view that for the zero zero on its limited interval that is the highest point but over all the function it may or may not be the highest point right in our case of cubic function somehow it's uh, zero zero of, of course there's some value greater than that right but for a small piece right, for a small trend we get this zero zero is uh, relatively the biggest of a interval that is uh, from a curve getting up and the climb to the highest and getting down right, for that uh, relatively a small uh, piece a small piece of uh, an interval that we call this a relative maximum right. so we say a function has relative maximum x0 zero, zero means uh, left to it, right to it the trend is uh, increased and decreased right, of the function. We have seen uh, something about increase decrease, right, which we get relatively in that small part, at least it's a maximum. Right, that uh, on this small part, relatively, it is the highest. We're not talking about absolutely over every interval of the function, but just uh, this small piece that it is called relative maximum. And similarly, right, we get uh, the uh, bottom right, from the decrease down all the way down to the bottom, then goes up, uh, which uh, the two negative four, the point, is relatively the lowest point over, over that interval. Right? It's not over all the lowest, we have left pieces somewhere below, but relatively that point is the smallest which we can see the curve is trending going down then going up right at this point is changing of monotonic right, so we have that is called relative minimum right. or in short we can write down relative rel right relative Minimum. Right, so we'll have uh, more detail about how to find the relative extrema for the later section, but they are relative extremas. Running to first, and we'll see later how to find them, especially. the function 9x squared minus 3 over x uh, to the third is a function that well, has a relative maxima x3, 2 that is uh, provided the curve. Right, so what we need to try is try to find f prime of uh, 3 to see what's that uh, relative extrema related to our derivatives. Right, so do that, what we're doing is, well, still the quotient rule. Uh, u is 9x squared minus 3, or v is x to the third. u prime is uh, 9 times 2x, 18x. v prime is 3x squared. Right, then derivative f prime of x, uh, u prime v times v prime u over v squared. squared yes u prime 
V minus V prime U that we can see well everything has a factor of x squared right so we call it divide by x squared for every term at least x to the fourth divided by x squared we have uh, x squared divided by x squared that's 27 x squared minus 3 over x to the fourth Right, uh, if you want, you could multiply out. That's 18x squared minus 27x squared plus uh, 81. Negative what? Negative 9x squared plus 81 divided by x to the fourth. Right, you can factor more to see since that is uh, negative 9 factorial x squared minus 9. Or it could be factored as x plus 3, x minus 3. Then clearly, f prime of 3, with are substituting the 3 that has a 3 as a factor, which means the 3 is the 0. Right? f prime of 3, negative 9 times 3 plus 3. 3 minus 3 over 3 to the fourth, which will give us a 0. Right? That's what we can observe. And uh, literally in that curve, right, what we can see is while well, the graph is changing its monotonicity, that is going from increase of the slope, right? going from increase uh, to decrease. Uh, or we can see the slope is going from positive then to flat, then go to negative of the tangent line, right? The slope of tangent line. We can observe from it. Uh, originally the slope is positive, then going on that point is flat, then become negative of the slope. Right? That at that point we see the tangent line is going to horizontal, that we agree with that, well, the f prime of 3 is equal to 0. Right? So we may get a conclusion that, well, this relative maximum, actually the other point is negative 3, since this one is an odd function on the left piece, will get a relative minimum at negative 3, as we can see. But also what we can see from this part at least, right, the relative maximum have a uh, have a slope equal to zero or f prime equal to zero at this point. That's what we can see at least. Right, for the absolute function, we had uh, well, seen an official uh, derivative of uh, the absolute function, right, maybe. But at least we have seen that, well, the absolute function mm, is undefined when the middle is equal to zero. Right, what we can see is well the negative has a slope of negative one, on the positive piece it has a slope of one, right? Which uh, by means of f prime of x 
is equal to negative 1 for x is negative is equal to positive 1 when x is uh, positive. Right, it's a, especially with the zero, it's undefined. Well, we have seen the use the limit definition of derivative. We have seen that already, right, before in the previous chapters, that uh, f prime of zero is undefined. It's not defined that the zero means uh, the function is continuous but not smoothly continuous. Well, what we have is the function has a shock tip at this point. Right? That of course the derivative not exist, but still. It is true that the zero zero is our relative uh, minimum, that the function is changing its monoton monotonicity, that we get a uh, decrease on the left and increase on the right, which cause it a relative minimum. But relatively and absolutely also in this point at this point that is our Minimum, right? But we, in the view of relative uh, extrema, that we get a relative minimum at this uh, point. But the criteria for the derivative at this uh, point is undefined. Right? F prime of x is undefined. It is defined as negative one for x smaller than zero. It is uh, positive one as we view the slope. Right? That the derivative is uh, positive. But actually, simply at this function, it is undefined. I mean, at this point, it is uh, undefined. Right? So that is another uh, category we see. Right? So maybe if a function has a derivative undefined, it can also cause the change of, con uh, change of uh, monotonicity. Right? That uh, it may cause a relative extreme in that point. Right, so we see the true definition to wrap up everything we see. First of all, function has to be defined. If f prime of c equals zero or f prime of c not exist uh, does not exist in other words if it's not differentiable at c C is a critical number. If may has a relative maximum or a relative minimum or neither as the critical number. Right, so that is the definition. Right, so we want to find a critical number. That means uh, at uh, the function the derivative equals zero for some uh, continuous piece that is our uh, c, that is our c. Right, then you have a continuous, smoothly continuous curve 
when it's differentiable, we find that, well, the C1 equals zero, F of C2 equals zero, that may it cause a relative maximum or the relative minimum. Uh, or, F prime of C equal to zero. It is a horizontal tangent line, but it is not a uh, man, maxima or minima. I got the wrong graph, it is uh, something like this, a cubic function. Right, even though the derivative equals zero, F prime is equal to zero, but uh, that one is not a relative uh, extrema, right? That one is neither the maximum the, or the minimum in that uh, no matter how small the interval is. Uh, also, we have seen the absolute function that derivative not exist. We have seen the the cubic uh, radical, right? something like cubic of uh, radical. We have the vertical uh, derivative as a vertical line that does not exist, which is not differentiable. Uh, but this point is actually the minimum. And something like the cubic function, uh, we have also the vertical uh, vertical tangent line as the zero, but this point is not a minimum, not a maximum. Right? That we have the uh, neither. Right, so it could be both case, right? Both case are critical point. F prime equals zero, F prime not exist. Oh we're looking for them, then they could be a maximum, could be a maximum, could be a minimum, or maybe uh, neither. But still that point we find out, follow that two condition are our critical point. Uh, or the possible case for minimum or maximum is lies in the condition, follow the condition. It's either f prime equals zero at this point or f prime does not exist at this point. It may be maximum, minimum, maybe neither, maybe maximum, or maybe minimum or maximum, maybe uh, neither uh, for those conditions. And that's how we find the critical point, right, or critical number. The critical number is just f prime equals zero, looking for f prime equals zero, or looking for f prime uh, undefined or not exist. Right, usually the basic first condition is a function has to be defined at the C. Right? At this point, function has to be defined, which means the most important thing we're looking for is the domain of the function. Right, to see for which x the function is defined. So the steps to find our absolute extrema on closed interval The first steps is to find the critical number. Close into from, uh, for instance, the, from A to B. I right? find the uh, critical numbers. Function is uh, differentiable on the close uh, on the open interval, or it's continuous on the close interval. Therefore, if we find the critical numbers, we only need to find on the open interval. Right? We don't need to seek for close interval. Just everything inside A and B doesn't include the endpoints. Right, then evaluate. at A, B, 
and to critical numbers. Right, so as we said, critical numbers possibly to be the relative extrema, then the relative extrema possibly could be the absolute extrema on the closed interval. Right, then together with the end points, that's the first uh, three pictures we have seen, right? Maybe the relative is the absolute, maybe some of the end points could be the absolute extrema. That we need to evaluate the end points together with the critical number, right, to find. And the least value is uh, the absolute minimum and the greatest value is the absolute maximum. Right, so that's our the steps. I find the critical number first, evaluate A, B, and together with the critical numbers, and then looking for which value is the least, which value is the best, uh, is the greatest, then the least value is the absolute minimum corresponding to the certain x value, right? then the uh, greatest value is the absolute maximum corresponding to the uh, given x also, right? but the values are the minimum and maximum.